Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today we want to have a look at Ubuntu Unity. Yes, it still exists. In fact, it is an official Ubuntu spin. Or I think they call them flavors in Ubuntu. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a brief discussion about it. So first and foremost, um, Ubuntu Unity, you can grab it at ubuntuunity.org. This will have a lot of the information that we have. There are a couple of different currently maintained versions. Of course, the 2410 will drop out of support soon. Uh, 2504 was just released, and then we have the LTSs for 2404. So you can grab Ubuntu Unity from there. They still have the statement, should you upgrade from 1604? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> I don't think we need to go into details on that. Now, the Unity team here, uh, they do have um, a little bit of development. Now, one of the things that actually caused a little bit of concern for me here is I don't see much movement on the project since December of 2022. So this was actually posted on Christmas, December 2022 um, from, Ruz, uh, from Ru uh, Rudra, I guess. And um, so they have information here. This is the Unity 7.7. .7, and uh, you'll see there's no update from then. The last blog post is from then. And we have the Unity X, Unity, uh, Unity X 7.7. .7. We have the Unity 7.7. .7. I think the X was uh, kind of keeping on the um, on the more X path is my guess. I didn't see a lot of clarity reading through the post. Of course, the one we are currently on here is actually Wayland. Now, their GitLab account, you'll see, also does not have a lot of updates. Uh, obviously, the website was updated. Uh, Yara was updated a couple years ago. This Unity issue tracker says three months ago, but this is all that's on it. Uh, and so if there happens to be a security hole, it's not going to be patched. But on the good news, like DOS, nobody's looking at this. So who knows? It might be perfectly secure. It might be just as fine. Uh, just even clicking through on these here, you'll also notice there is a, this says two months ago, there's a change there. There's a seven months ago on unityd.org. Um, I think that's the main, is that the main? Yeah, that's the main website. So they're updating the website a little bit more, but if you look through here, I'm not actually seeing any file changes. Now, they've not completely gone away. Their X account there on the bottom of the page is slightly active. They've at least repost things periodically. So it's not like completely abandoned. So my guess is, is that it's probably safe. It's just it just hasn't been updated. Maybe they just haven't found holes. Maybe there's no recent upgrade. But thinking how quickly Wayland has moved from 2022 to now, I would expect to see a little bit more movement. And in fact, maybe some of the little artifices that I'm seeing from time to time looking at this are possibly a reflection of that. I don't know. Well, with the introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and chat really briefly about the installation. The installation is very reminiscent of installing Ubuntu for the first times that I've used Ubuntu myself. Uh, back in that, was it uh, 2011, I think, to 2016, 2017, I think they ran Unity. I could be wrong on those exact dates. But those were kind of the periods of time that Unity was there, and the Installer was very skeuomorphic, and uh, it, the options here haven't changed significantly. The only thing I, uh, in fact, I don't really think there's anything different on this installer. I'd actually have to go back and look at some really, really old videos from the channel to see. Uh, but the installation process, nice and simple. Uh, I had that option there of, you know, full install, custom install, and there was one extra screen. There's like three or four extra software packages I had the option to click to install as well uh, Thunderbird matrix and uh, you know a couple other ones there so once we are done with the installation we land here on the main desktop and we can have a look at it now this does use uh, not the older more classic hit the the unity menu button and you see all of the applications out you you kind of see uh, the first place we land on here is just the applications here 
uh, or the the basic home here. You can search for whatever you want to search for, and that will easily filter things out. This one here is, I think it's the most recently used. Over on the applications, here's just a couple of the recently used, and then we have the installed. If you want to see everything, you got to click on this here, and then you'll be able to see everything. And one of the things I noticed in here is there, uh, the way that uh, the applications aren't really sorted out by their categories, it throws everything in here, including all of the settings. In fact, I was thinking about this. You know, almost every desktop environment includes the various settings applications as uh, included in their list. So you can search for them on the menu. I think the one exception I think might be GNOME relegated all of that to the one clear settings manual, which does a good job of really cleaning up the system. Uh, that's just an observation I made as I was looking at this. But there are a few things, you know, there's three different terminals here. Why are there two date and times? One says date and time, the other one date and time, you know. Uh, so we had a, it does look a little bloated, although when you boil out the system settings, it's not as bloated as it might appear to be. So ultimately, it is not too bad in that respect. I thought we had the option somewhere. Yeah, you can go over here. You can sort out by the various cat categories as well. So if you did like that category searching, you can do that. I think I have to toggle these on or off. There you go. So that just shows you everything inside of the offices. I can search for files and folders. I can search for videos, search for music, search for photos, things like that. So those are all options that we have within the Unity menu. So if you are otherwise unfamiliar with Unity, uh, we just have this nice system here. We have a panel on the side, and you can move the panel. Um, you can make it uh, auto-hide. You can uh, uh, have higher or lower visual effects depending on your your graphics. And uh, I think you can do a top corner to top left corner. I'm not sure uh, what the top left corner is doing in this some of this in this particular instance here. I'm not sure. Uh, there's left side. I, I'm not sure. Maybe they have something messed up there. As far as your or your icon size here, you can change your your icon size over here. So if you did want to change your icon size, you can do that. And then you can go with a light theme or a dark theme. And then we have a number of different colors that you can choose from inside of your system here. One of the things I did notice is the theming up at the top there. I'll get rid of my gnome boxes box there. It's a little bit hard to spot. Um, let's just go back to that. There you go. You can see they're just... The coloration of those kind of stays the same. Your your kind of top panel icons, so they are kind of hard to see. Just know that they're up there, and um, you can do that. Here's the rest of the settings. Of course, we just have our basic hardware settings, printers, tablets, system settings. What are our details, software, and updates, and things like that? Uh, how frequently does it update, and what are your update channels, and things like that? So here's the software. Here's the other software. Here's uh, your subscribe to all updates, security and recommended, security only. How frequently do you check for them? Notify you of new versions, only for LTS, never or for any new version. So that's all the same stuff that you find inside of Ubuntu itself. Here's the details. So here Unity 7.7 .7 is our version there. A little hard to see in the dark theme. And uh, that's kind of what we see inside of there. Now, they did give us also the Unity Tweak tool. So the Unity Tweak tool is something we used to have to install separately onto our system. This gives you a little bit more control over different things. What are your icon sizes? What are your things? I did find that some of these options in here, they... While all these options are, are in here, not every one of them worked as I was expecting them to work. Um, just be aware of that. Here's cursors, so you can do that. Let's go ahead and close that out. Desktop icons. If I want to run desktop icons, you can turn those on. So it's actually nice to have the options there that, that we have. Now, here's the thing that I thought was a little odd about this particular one on Ubuntu Unity. We don't actually have any software apps, uh, applications. So let's go ahead and just search for software again. 
Uh, we don't have a means to install software except for Synaptic Package Manager. Synaptic Package Manager is not exactly user friendly, uh, and even people who are more used to Linux could still struggle sometimes because there's, it literally shows you every little thing, every tiny dependency, just every little item that could possibly be installed is in here. And we don't have a super good way to filter things out. I mean, if you're looking for a specific application, you can find it in here. But frankly, uh, if you are looking for a specific application to that degree, you know what it is and it's faster to install with the terminal, <laughs> in all honesty. Uh, but we don't actually have any software uh, installers on here. And I thought that was a little odd. So I was like, well... What's going on here is it uh is it possible like did do they not even running snaps no they're running snaps just fine they just seem for whatever reason to exclude installing the snap store so if you are using this and you want a gui snap store you're gonna have to do snap install and snap store snap it's snap dash store enter your password there and that'll go out and grab the snap store it'll download everything connect it all up Give it just one moment here to finish up. And once that's done, there you go. It's it's done. Now it should appear on your menu. It's called App Center, I think. There it is. Yep. So there's your App Center. So once you click this, now you can install your GUI software all you want. Why was this excluded from Ubuntu Unity? I have no idea. I think it was an oversight, <laughs> in all honesty. Uh, let's just double check it all works. Let's type for Audacity. Here's the Snap version of Audacity. I have a Debian package version of Audacity. So, and then I can do see all results. So. Uh, so it appears to be working just fine. Everything is there. So if you do like that old nostalgia and you want to have a look at Ubuntu Unity, you can download it. It is an official flavor of, uh, of Ubuntu. And uh, you can go back to those good old days and use the system the way that you liked. So what are my overall thoughts and my overall takes? Let me go ahead and conclude the video on this. And the reason I wanted to do that is Ubuntu is a little nostalgic for many of us in the Linux community because it was the place where many of us cut our teeth on Linux. Now, most people using Linux on a regular basis have moved on to other distributions, maybe other desktop environments. I personally, as I'm looking at this screen, we are doing this and we are actually on a Linux Mint uh, base here. I have Cinnamon running on my Endeavor OS on the other system. Suffice it to say, I kind of like the Cinnamon desktop environment. I'm running that everywhere I can and it makes sense to run. That being said, uh, I love the Unity gave me that first look and Unity gave Ubuntu during really that time that Linux gained a lot of user base or at least a lot of recognition in popular culture. It was Unity that was that iconic look. Now they've done a decent job in recent Ubuntus of mimicking the basic look and feel with GNOME, but it's not exactly the same. Now, when I first switched to Linux, I did so. If you follow my channel, you know I did that because Windows 10 was coming out. I read that EULA and I'm like, no way, not happening. I am not never running to Windows 10 for a main production system. I got one floating around if I need it. Uh, it doesn't get used for much of anything, you know, testing stuff and showing you how to install Linux mostly. Uh, but all that being said, uh, when it comes down to using a system, I started with this. I ultimately chose to move to Linux Mint when I first saw Linux Mint. I thought this is the perfect Linux distribution for me. And this is what I moved to because I just didn't like the general look and the feel of uh, of Unity. Mostly just, it just doesn't jive personally with my flow of work. Whereas you can kind of see how I have my Linux Mint here set up. My Linux Mint, I got my full menu over here. I have quick launch bars. I have my whole task menu out here. So anything that I open up will appear down here. I can very quickly view any of the windows I need just by clicking on, on these various options. And that really was what I wanted for the way I do my increased productivity, my increased work. That being said, there is something about the simplicity of Unity that I really do like. 
and I think that it is an excellent, uh, just an excellent desktop, if for no other purpose than for the point that uh, we all kind of got our start here, and it brings us back to that basic to stop and think, what was my life before switching to Linux? And that's kind of what I want you to think about, too. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.